Hi everybody, you're so welcome to day four. I deeply encourage you to repeat all of the days as much as you can in order to maintain a healthy neck. For today, you just need some wall space and your mat. Hi everybody, welcome to day four. When you're ready, we'll start on all fours. So spread the fingers wide, hands are in line with your knees so they're quite close together and then you take a step forward with each hand. Now bring your shoulders above your wrists again. Press into the feet, make sure you're not veering to one side or the other, so find that symmetry, that midline. Shoulders above the wrists, shoulder blades together. Let your head hang. We're going to hold for two minutes. Let the belly relax, encouraging the back to arch. You can always adjust that to whatever suits you, but hopefully just relaxed will suit and whatever arch comes of that, that's okay. Shoulders above your wrists, arms are strong, but the shoulder blades are together. Let your head hang. Sometimes when we strengthen the arms, we kind of instinctually push the floor away at the same time, but we allow our shoulder blades together, letting the head hang. And looking down, make sure you're not veering to one side, so we're nice and symmetrical through the midline of the body. Relax the belly, lying the back to arch, let the head hang. Keep breathing. <sighs> Shoulders above your wrists, nice and lined up through the body. Head is hanging, shoulder blades are together, the belly is relaxing, your back is arching. Feel the strength through the arms, feel the loading from the shoulder into the elbow into the wrist. Feel the heat that starts to build up in the arms, let the head hang. Feel the length across your chest as your shoulder blades draw together. Feel the strength through the arms to hold you here, let the head hang, a little bit of awareness into the front of your feet, but not so much that it pushes the legs so much that your back neutralizes, so let the belly relax. Shoulders above your wrists, let the head hang, relax your belly, feel that loading into the wrists, keep breathing. Let the belly relax, let the head relax. Shoulder blades together while also pushing the floor away. Shoulders above your wrists. Awareness through what side of the body you're leaning on more and even it out. Strong through the arms. Shoulder blades together. Head is hanging, keep breathing. And when you're ready, you can let it go. Walk back along the mat, relax your arms. Give your body a moment to process all of that. So relaxing the front of the neck. Feeling that space in the front of the body. And for our next exercise, we're gonna bring our mat all the way up against the wall. For this exercise, bring your mat all the way up against the wall. Bring yourself as close to the wall as you can, or you may need to maneuver in from one side, but I'm bringing my bum close into the wall, lengthening my legs. Make sure that your feet are a little closer than hip width apart, so they're not too wide and the knees are not turning out, so we have that nice neutral line through the legs. Get as close to the wall as you can, press your legs against the wall, bend at the feet, pulling your toes down towards your knees. Press your legs against the wall, push up through the heels of your feet, palms face up to the ceiling and relax your shoulders. We have five minutes on the timer. Breathe deeply into the body to help and encourage anywhere that's gripping, any gripping muscles to relax and let go. The upper body is as relaxed as possible while we're flexing the ankles, so using the front of the legs. Sometimes when we're concentrating on an area that we're using and engaging, the rest of the body can kind of tense. So make sure you let go with the upper body, lower back, mid back, upper back, open up the chest, palms face up, relax the arms, and then continue to pull the toes down towards the knees. Anchor the legs against the wall as much as you can. You might notice that one foot is working a lot stronger than the other, or maybe you can even see it, just correct it. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna think about my left foot and my left hip and try and even out the work in my legs. It might be same side for you, maybe neither side is dominant, but just try and explore a little bit, mind-body connection and just figure it out. <laughs> so you can see it sometimes with your feet, but you'll feel it mostly. Relax your shoulders, keep breathing through the center of your body. Use your belly, your rib cage, and your chest to breathe.
you really want to let your bones relax through the floor. So the back of the head relaxes down through the mat, the neck, the chest. The level floor is going to encourage a neutral spine, that neutral foundation for the head to sit on top of. And we also get to use the legs here in a neutral position, training the deep postural fibers, the deep slow twitching fibers in the body without standing because standing our hips are guessing with how our ribs are, with our shoulders, with our neck. And then sometimes if we're trying to get our eyes back to the horizon to find our nice neutral position, the shoulders may adjust around it, the hips may adjust. So for example, if your right shoulder is tight and lifts towards your ear, your left hip may lift up to make you feel like you're neutral instead of working out what's going on. So the tightness that's there. So usually opposite hip to opposite shoulder will have some relationship. It can be same side as well. And it can obviously be tech neck or any of those forward postures. So we're trying to always bring ourselves back to neutral. And here's a nice way to use the ankles, line up our legs. That weight is drawing into the hips with an open chain in the feet. So again, our legs and our hips are not guessing and adjusting around possibly a misaligned upper body. So it could be a rotation in the rib cage, somewhere in the spine, the shoulders, the neck. So it's a nice way to treat the lower body, but also again, letting our upper body relax into the floor, helping to neutralize the spine. And a lot of these exercises seem simple in theory, but if we don't practice them enough, then our body needs them more and more. Keep breathing. And we're flexing our feet here. So we're getting some length through the hamstrings and the calves, through the back, the back line of the body. So then when we come to standing, there's just a bit more space for the back of the neck. We feel that gentle chin nod, relaxing the shoulders. Keep breathing. That deep breath is going to help relax your vagus nerve. So the nerve involved in our stress response in our body. So our sympathetic or our parasympathetic stress response. We can relax it down, help to relax the nervous system. Check in with your legs. Both legs are pressing against the wall or as much as you can, flexing at the ankles, pushing up through the heels. Notice if there's any twisting through the feet or if the little toes are lifting up or the big toes and just try to even it out. That takes awareness, that mind-body connection. We keep scanning the body. Relax your hips through the ground. Lower back, mid back, upper back. Keep strong with the legs. It is work for the ankles. Open the chest and relax your shoulders. Relax the back of the head. Imagine your neck, the muscles are just melting through the mat, through the floor. Your face muscles are melting around your eyes, your jaw, your forehead. Shoulders are melting down through the floor as if the muscle is melting away from the bones. Push up through the heels, press your legs against the wall. Pull your toes down. And whenever you're ready, you can point your feet and come out of it. So maybe you want to go to one side or maybe you want to shimmy away from the wall, whatever suits you. For our next exercise, we're standing. Like yesterday, make sure to set up your pelvis. So scoop through the core, gently tucking the tailbone, zip up and knit your ribs together, just so we feel like the front of the body is pushing through the back of the body because we don't want this to happen. So scoop, knit the ribs and press down evenly through both hips. So we're pushing evenly into both feet. They're parallel and hip width apart. Interlock the fingers, press away, keep the thumbs extended, stretching out. You push the heels of the hands up to the ceiling. Relax your shoulders, but it's okay if they creep up to the ears a little bit. Tuck your tailbone, knit your ribs. We're really focusing here. So keep that alignment. So all this vertical loading down through the body in this standing position, this closed chain for the feet. So we have one minute here and you're looking up at your hands. Keep pressing up through the heels of the hands, pushing down through your feet, reaching with the thumbs. Scoop the belly and knit the ribs to make sure you have that alignment. If there's a lot of tightness around the upper back, you're gonna notice that scooping the belly and knitting the ribs while keeping the hands up here gives you a really big stretch. You can feel it around your rotator cuff, around the armpits. Keep breathing. Look up at your hands. We're engaging the back of the neck. 
So that was super cool. Inhibition for the front of the neck, stretching the front of the neck, feeling the heat through the arms. Again, we're loading down through all the major load bearing joints in the body, through the shoulders into the hips, through your ankles, your knees. Keep pushing evenly through both feet, scoop through the core. The back of the neck is short, front of the neck is very long, and you're looking up as you push the heels of the hands up. Keep breathing. And when you're ready, you can let it go. For our next exercise, we're on the mat again. For this exercise, we're gonna to come to a side lying position. Your knees are bent, so there's a 90 degree angle behind the knees and you're straight out from your hip. Hands are on top of each other and you can relax your head down. We don't want the top knee to slide back or to lift and we don't want the knees to lift off the ground. So you keep pressing these legs down into the mat or into the ground. So our head is going to follow our top hand behind us and you can look back at the hand. Your opposite hand can keep the knees together or it can stay on the floor. And we're going to hold this for four minutes. Keep breathing. It's quite a big twist through the center of the body. So you're listening to the elastic in your body where that area of bind starts to kick in and send you messages of your range being big enough for now. Just allow your hand to melt through the floor. Maybe some of us the elbow gets down there. Maybe some of us the shoulder gets closer. You don't have to have the shoulder on the ground. That's a really, really big twist. Just listen to your own body. It's a lot to ask of the center of the body, this amount of rotation. Freeing up this rotation in the mid back has a knock on effect up into the back of our neck and we're rotating the head here as well. So we're getting lots of ranges here in stretches and we're holding so our neuromuscular connections can feed into each other and rewire this pattern, the amount of length here in the muscles. Knees stay together because otherwise we'll compensate with our hips. We won't be twisting as much through the center of the body. And this way we can see how far away our shoulder is from the ground and it doesn't have to get all the way down. Some of us it's the back of the hand and the rest of the arm is up. Some of us it's the hand and the elbow. Keep breathing. You're not forcing any breath. Just notice the rise and fall of your breath in your chest and your ribs. The breath is going to help the muscles to let go. But again, we're not forceful with the breath. Just let your body relax. Every now and again, you may need to restock the knees. They could slip back by accident. So just check in every time you're not sure. Stay fully present. So we're scanning from the toes up into the knees, into the hips, up along the middle of the body in this rotation, across the chest and the head. This exercise brings our arms and our hands on the same plane with our shoulders, so our frontal plane. It's nice to spend a bit of time in these planes to balance out all the ranges of motion that all the joints give us. So like we said in class three, our arms spend a lot of time in the sagittal plane. So it's nice to get that length through the mid pecs. It's nice to get that length across the shoulder. Keep breathing. Stretch the arm out a bit further as long as your knees stay on top of each other. And don't force the mid spine here. So wherever your rotation is, that's fine. Back of the arm against the ground, make your way up to the elbow, see how it feels towards the shoulder, but never force it. Relax fully, so allow every exercise to involve some meditation. So breathe fully, relax fully, scan your body, mindful mind-body connection. Relax your head, relax your shoulders, knees together, so keep that stocking. Gentle breathing. Allow your body, allow your mind to meditate. 
check your position. Knees stacked, reaching with the arm, back of the hand against the floor, elbow, shoulder maybe a little bit closer than the first minute we were in this position. And when you're ready, you can slowly come out of it. It's going to feel quite intense in the spine, so just make sure to be gentle on your body. Don't go for a stretch in the opposite direction straight away. Allow the other side of this exercise to do that. So <laughs> when you're ready, we'll swap sides. You have your 90 degree angle behind the knees and that right angle from the hips to the knees. Hands on top of each other. Relax your head down. The head follows the opposite hand back. Knees stay on top of each other. The hand can keep the knees together or you can stretch both arms out, whatever you prefer. And we're holding for four minutes. Keep breathing. It's quite an intense position to hold. So we do feel any gripping around our ribs. We don't want to force it ever. So we don't want to be in pain here because of our floating ribs. So you can bring the hand a bit closer or maybe the shoulder a bit higher. Listen again to the elastic response, the areas of bind in your body and adjust accordingly. But hopefully we can just let the weight hang back and the weight of our own body is gonna to help to free up the mid spine. The rotation in the mid spine is really opening up that rotation, bringing back the full range and getting rid of any of the inhibitions, inhibitions excuse me, in the muscles in that area will help to free up the muscles into the upper back and the neck. Also down the chain into your lower back and your hips. So we can feel the connection here from opposite hip to opposite shoulder, the spiral oblique chain in the body. Reach the arm out, relax the back of the hand down the elbow. Maybe the shoulder gets a bit closer to the ground. You could pause the video and spend longer on the side that's tighter. So for example, you might notice that this side, the shoulder's way higher than the other side. I'd spend more time on this side until it starts to balance out and so you, until you start to forget which side is tighter. So you can do that with these glasses, pause it and cater it to suit your body. Otherwise, we've been counting evenly on both sides just to make sure we bring that balance back. But if you're confident in knowing that one side's a lot tighter than the other, you can do extra, an extra minute or two and keep that up for a few days. Ride out the exercises and keep them up as a little rehab routine for yourself. You can notice the difference because you'll feel yourself getting closer to the ground as the days go on. So you can measure it and you can measure how free it feels. You stop if it doesn't feel right, question it if you're not sure. You can send me questions or you can ask your doctor. Keep breathing. Relax the weight of the arm. Knees on top of each other. It's normal that we kind of slip back a little bit. So make sure you have that um, stacking with the knees. And allow your body to meditate, allow your mind to meditate. So mindful, bring your mind into your toes, ankles, knees, hips, following the rotation, the twist in the center of the body up along your spine, across your shoulders, down the arm. The more you can scan the body, the more we'll create those mind-body connections. Just bring yourself back into your body. Think about the inside of your body, inside your pelvis, inside your spine, inside your rib cage behind your eyes, up your nose, and just think about the inside of the body, then the outside of the body. Keep reinforcing the mind-body connection. Just spending a bit of time with the mind-body connection, meditating can help your balance because we bring ourselves back in and ground ourselves. So little things like that, all of the systems match up and catch up with each other in the body. Keep breathing. Knees are stacked. The arm is heavy, you feel the shoulder getting closer to the ground the more you visit this exercise. It might take some people 10 days, it might take 15 days, it could be three days for it to let go a little bit. It depends on how your chest muscles are, how your neck muscles are, how the mid spine is, how the hips are. Knees are stacked, reaching back, back of the hand down, elbow down, shoulder down, keep breathing. can look towards the hand to get a bigger twist with the neck and the mid spine if it's comfortable or you can just look up at the ceiling. Keep breathing. And whenever you're ready, slowly come back. It should feel a bit better than the first side and we did the opposite side on day three that we started with. But if you need a moment to adjust your spine, please do. So you can relax it out. 
For this exercise, we're gonna lie down on the mat with our knees bent. Your feet can be hip distance apart and parallel, so make sure your feet are lined up. And we're rolling down onto the mat. Hands by the sides. We're gonna get into our deep cervical flexors, so the top of our spine, the muscles that are gonna help us to flex. And we're gonna work those muscles because even though we don't want tension in the neck and we're not gonna hold tension here, you want those deep muscles to be working well to stop the more superior layers from overworking. Come out of it any time, it doesn't feel right. You can hold for 20 seconds if you're building it up today, if there's any weakness in the endurance of those deep cervical flexors or our goal is 45 seconds. So it's a simple sounding exercise in practice. It's quite tough. So just listen to your body and come out of it if you need. Before you come forward, make sure you nod your chin in. So you're creating as much of a double chin as you can. And then we're gonna come forward. Come out of it if it doesn't feel right, but relax your shoulders. So we don't wanna come forward like that. You're gonna feel it too much in the front of the neck. Nod your chin in as far as you can. And then we're gonna roll forward. 45, 44, 43, and one and relax it down probably the hardest exercise <laughs> we've done today and you could repeat that twice a day but don't overdo it with that exercise so if it's one you like just don't overdo it just get those deep endure the endurance of the deep cervical flexors working and then relax it out so now we're going to go into our stretches we're coming to seated again for our next exercise, we're gonna use some isometric contractions to create a reciprocal inhibition for the opposite side of our neck. So we're gonna work with flexion and then rotation. We felt this yesterday, maybe just going through the ranges, maybe some of you do it all the time, maybe some of us know about it and don't do it and know that we should, and maybe some of us it's brand new to, but maybe for the first time, you've established one side that feels tighter than the other, just going for that little exploration. So you could do this exercise just on the tight side or you can follow me today to balance it out. Maybe you wanna do the whole course a couple of times before you start pausing and working on just one side of your body and you can always ask questions if you're not sure. So center yourself up. We're gonna start, so you're mirroring me so you can start on your left side, I'm on my right, but you can start with the left side. So your left hand, just gently against the side of your head. And before we flex, just press. So we start to kind of ignite the opposite side. So it's this isometric contraction. Relax your shoulders and just press maybe 5% of your strength. So just feel it kind of ignite and that's it. And we're holding for five, four, three, two, and one, and then let it go. Now we're gonna go to our end range. So as far as we can, and then you press gently. We don't want the body to compensate with this and press down really strong. So find your center line, go to the end range where you feel the muscles start to pull a little bit here. You feel the binding and then just gently press down 5% of your strength. You just feel the muscles kick in. Five, four, three, two, and one, and come back. Let's do the same on the other side. So we gently press, you find your pressure, you find your strength and then you ease off. That's the hardest part of it actually easing off because we always feel like we really wanna feel that push, but just gentle. We're holding here, pressing into the hand, five, four, three, two, and one and come back. Then with your shoulders staying in the same um, place that they are, so nice and neutral with the upper body, you go to the end range but watch that this kind of stuff doesn't happen. So relax your shoulders and we press. Feel the strength and then ease off, but keep a little bit of awareness there, a little bit of that waking up in the muscles, that ignition. So five, four, three, two, and one. And you can come back. 
Now rotate. So keep the shoulders forward and you rotate to your left shoulder and then come back. Now bring the hand and just rotate a gentle bit. Push, feel the outside of the neck but not too hard and keep your shoulders in your mid spine in position. So you're pressing for five, four, three, two, and one, and then come back. Now to end range, shoulders are forward, so keep your alignment, and we press. Five, four, three, two, and one, and come back. Second side, so rotate fully, shoulders forward, watch the rotation in the spine, and then we go just a gentle rotation, as if you're trying to push the head back, but you resist that. Five, four, three, two and one ease off now go for your full range and again it's as if you're trying to press the head back to the center so we have these opposite forces shoulders stay forward especially the mid spine so keep the rib cage facing forward when you're ready five four three two and one and come back to the center you strangely feel taller and the neck is a bit freer, even though that was just a few or five seconds for each one of those exercises. Now we're going to go into our stretches that we've been doing every day because I think we're all going to find them so valuable. It's just the opposite of how we spend most of our day. So I hope you're loving them as much as I do. So when you're ready, we start with the middle. So draw your skin down around your sternum around your breastbone the fingers can keep it down the heel of the hand can keep it down your side of your hand can keep it down and then the chin goes up we're holding for 30 29 38 37 26 25 24 23 22 21 sit tall 19 18 17 16 15 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and you can bring it in. So we come to the start of our collarbone, draw the skin down over the front of your collarbone, press in as if you're just tapping that skin down. The head goes back slightly, rotates slightly, ear towards the shoulder slightly, so the opposite ear to the opposite shoulder of the side that we're drawing down on. So draw the skin down, head back, rotate, ear to the shoulder, holding for 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one come back to the center we're moving up the collarbone avoiding the nerves so anywhere that feels hot or feels like there's pain just avoid it and go slightly somewhere else pull the skin down over the top of the collarbone tap the muscle in head goes back slightly rotate and over feel it up into the ear 30 29 28 27 <clears throat> 26 25 24 23 22, 21, 20, keep bringing that skin down under the collarbone, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one and come back so we'll go further up the collarbone for our third position just make sure you're not pressing in on something that feels hot on the nerves <laughs> so the heel of the hand can help that so you just kind of feel the muscles but you can use your fingers if it's more precise if you can grip the muscle so you draw the skin down over the collarbone and you draw your head to the side rotate and lean back slightly 30 29 28 27 26 
we've warmed all that up you can just do a little gentle so you could hold across the entire collarbone draw in and down and then just do a little soft tissue release so bringing the ear further away from the collarbone and you can do that as massages for yourself and we're going to do the other side when you're ready so find the start of your collarbone draw in and down so tap the skin the muscle underneath the collarbone head goes back you feel it right up into the ears we feel our scalenes Gentle rotation and the ear towards the shoulder, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, breathe deep, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, go a bit further if you want, 11, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. You can come back to the centre. We go up a little bit further, draw the skin in and down. You can hold with a bigger surface with the hand or just with your fingertips. Ear to the side, gentle rotation and back with the head. 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, lean a bit more if you want, 18, 17, 16, 15, tall and strong with the center of the body, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three, two, and one. We go further up for the third position. Draw the skin in and down, lean over, feel it right up into the ear. Let the head hang a little bit, gentle rotation. 30, 29, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And you can come back. And again, you could use your hand, just a bigger space and just tease it out. So after we've really warmed up all of those ranges, you can do your own soft tissue release here. So using the head as the weight and drawing away from your collarbone. And you can do that with the center as well. So you feel it right up into the jaw and the side of the ears. And then you can let it go. For our last exercise, we're coming onto all fours. So our last exercise was also our first exercise. So we have those bookends. <laughs> so we're coming onto all fours, but the hands are quite close. So they trace through your knees. Then you take a step forward with each hand. Bring your shoulders above your wrists. Let the head hang, shoulder blades together. Let the belly relax. We're just doing a one minute hold. So our minute is starting now. Let your belly relax. It allows your back to arch. I lean onto the right side when I'm not thinking about it. So I'm gonna think about my left side. Shoulders above the wrists, let that heat up through the arms, shoulder blades together, let the head hang, keep breathing. With our neck rehab, the massages are lovely and we did those releases through the spindly muscles in the neck. But it's really important to think about misalignment or realignment in the body and correcting all of the posture throughout the body. 
So I hope that that's what you take away fully from this, that we want to look at the whole body and how we're stacking and correct any of those imbalances. And then your head is going to have a really nice foundation to stack on top of. It's still very valuable to be doing our repositioning with the neck, those bits of massages and retraining of the muscles. But I hope you feel through the whole body that alignment how it is going to really keep the neck pain away. We've done four days, but this could be a 20 day course, so you can repeat it. So when you're ready, you can come out of it. Allow your body to feel what you just did. That's gonna help our brain to program that new length in the muscles, the new positioning. So allow that lovely feeling of freedom through the neck and the opening of the shoulders. Thank you so much for joining me for these four days of neck rehab. I hope you will repeat it, even if that means you took your own notes and it becomes part of your practice. Keeping our neck free of pain is so important for our overall mood, for our sleep, for the hormones to flow, for the entire nervous system, and thinking about the realignment through the entire body. So any of the rehab programs that I have, I've got shoulder rehab, I've got ankle, knee, hip, I've got hip rehab, I've got wrist, elbow, shoulder rehab and back rehab and now this neck rehab, all of them are going to help the other ones because we start to appreciate how the whole body works, everything works together and that includes relaxing our mind and the little meditation we get in the exercises as well. So thank you so much for joining me, I hope to see you again very soon and more than anything I hope you just feel better and I hope your neck feels good now after these four days.